talk to us a little bit about the journey of a joke or a piece of material, how you take it from conception, developing the initial nugget of an idea, then to the final iteration when you get on stage. Yeah, well, this is, this is not universal in comedy. Everybody has their own method. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a very much a develop it on stage guy. So, um, I mean, and there's, there's, there's various scenarios. But let's, let's take my most recent scenario, which is the more complicated scenario. My mother dies, and I very quickly start doing jokes about my mother dying. But I, so obviously, funny stuff happens. Um, you know, like in the dying experience that I'm pretty sure are going to be funny. I happened to be at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. Literally, I was on stage nine days after my mom died in Melbourne. So I was doing a month. So I just committed to, I'm going to, I'm going to try some of these things that I find funny about my mom dying mm -hmm. and true, true trial and error and writing. Obviously every day you're thinking about what's funny. You know, the, the one joke I knew, say for example, was that my nephew had written this beautiful eulogy for my mom. And uh, I, I said I was going to read it because there's like, it's, it's, it's beautiful, but I knew there were some funny points. But the, at the finish, after this beautiful eulogy, I knew that the punchline was going to be, uh, you know, when I see this connection that they had and this beautiful relationship, it made me realize that a mother's love like a lot of traits, skips a generation, right? <laughs> Which a lot of parents like because yeah. they're all watching their children being loved by their grandmother in yeah. a way that they weren't loved yeah. <laughs> at the corresponding age. So I, I, I have some things I think are funny and I try them out on stage. Some work, some don't. Uh, and then, then for me, the next level is in a situation like Mia Mama, a show about my mom dying is now I'm going to commit to a theme of a show and I am going to like make this thing work from, you know, A to B an hour long journey of grief and childhood and motherhood. Mm. Right? And that just takes a lot of time and that's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. And that's a lot of time where you're going, why did you decide to do a show about death? Uh, but the payoff for the more complicated ones, it's quite satisfying when you get there. You don't always get there, mm. you know, but it's quite satisfying when you do. But, for like a basic routine, it's 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 very much funny idea. Write down some points that you think will be funny. Get up on stage and try it. Yeah. Stand up is just you have to get up on stage, and some routines just kick off straight away. Some routines you can tell it's worth worth it, but they need more work. Some routines just never get there, and then often I've had this a lot. Some routines seem like they don't get there. You put them in the in the vault. And then two years later, you're doing some other routine and it kind of meshes and become, becomes mm. one. Yeah, yeah. You know? And then other routines, like, they just don't work at the time and then for some reason, two years later, something comes up and you start doing it and you figure it out. Mm. But uh, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's all trial and error. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but obviously, there is writing and there's a lot of just ideas. Mm. Would you have a routine where you sit down... Like every, I know people like Nick Cave, for instance, like to have this nine to five routine. They just go into an office and they yeah, sit I've down. Never and been they, that guy. Yeah, I've never been the nine to five guy for stand up. Obviously, there have been times where I wrote a couple of plays with somebody else, collaboration stuff, where we stick to a schedule and a couple of screenplays. Like none of none of my actual TV scripts have ever been picked up. But at times where I'm working on those, I have to say nine to five when I was writing a book about my dad not nine to five but like I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. say like routine certain, so, yeah. yeah routine for those types of things for stand up no I mean I do think actually it would be beneficial to me the only problem is that like I just like every day there's not enough ideas well, some days I have so many and some yeah. days I have yeah. none yeah. so I never felt with stand up that it was necessary to have that much discipline like almost it would be overkill yeah but do you take the if you if you're walking down the street an idea comes to mind oh, yeah. you, put, you down put it down and I used just... to have the note the note the notebook <clears throat> used to be more important but now obviously you have your phone yeah you know uh, and then you just I text myself email myself you know some now now sometimes I do like a voice note to yeah. myself you know but yeah you you have to write it down if you don't write it down like every comedian will tell you that they thought of something they didn't write it down and they didn't think of it again yeah. and then the other big thing for me and this doesn't go for everybody but. I don't know. I, I think I'm my sharpest when I'm on stage. 
And I come up with a lot of stuff on stage, particularly like add-ons to stuff that I thought would be funny. Um, so particularly when I'm working on a new show, I tend to record my shows because a lot of stuff just happens. Yeah. And I have developed a lot of routines on stage, like a lot, mm. like, like jokes that just come to your head. Sometimes it's a little bit of audience interaction, but more often than not, it's just like you're sharp when you're on stage. The audience are laughing. Suddenly, like other things pop into your head. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like the deadline. Some people find if they have something to do, they can't do it until like it has to be done about an hour away. And then all of a sudden, like the ideas just come where if they know it's a week or two weeks away, there's an element of kind of doing in the comedy that you do that when you're actually performing your mind is then locked into it and ideas come and you kind of extrapolate them out. I think, yes, yeah, two things going on. I think one, what you said is 100% true, but I also think that whatever way your brain is firing, I actually think that you're, I think I'm actually sharper. Yeah. yeah. Like like the equivalent of, uh, you know, like w trying to play sports without a warm up, and then, you know, like eventually you really get in the zone. Like I feel like my brain is really like the most in the zone it's going to be on stage. Like, I actually think I'm smarter. Mm, mm. I, I think I'm smarter when I'm performing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And also, you know, it, you're it's in you the zone, the, probably. It's you like and the audience, a, yeah, you know, you're, exactly. getting that, you're getting that feedback. It's, yeah. it's just like, yeah. it, it just brings, it brings something out of you. Yeah. Especially because, don't forget, when you're writing stand-up, you just don't know if it's funny, but when it's there, it's so immediate. Yeah. It's so much easier to go, is this funny? Like, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. And you're not going to wait. Yeah. It's just, you, you, you're just talking, you're just yeah. performing. And there's probably a difference between a joke on paper and then when you actually go to say it on stage and you oh, perform man. it on stage. Like, yeah, it's, so, yeah, it's, yeah. So, it's so different. Yeah. And like, you know, the other thing that is kind of good and bad is in, when you're working on new material, you, you tend to digress a lot and you tend to go to the crowd a lot because you're kind of like, yeah. you're looking for ways to get away with things that are, in, you know, n they're not well thought out. They're incomplete. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're undone. They're yeah, rare. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you, you, you do develop a lot of stuff that way, but it can be bad where you don't commit to the actual joke. Sometimes in doing that, you never learn if the actual bit that you wrote is funny mm. because you're using all your stand up tricks. Yeah. So sometimes you have to not do that, but that usually happens after a couple of goes, you go, okay, now we're just gonna, now we just have to do this bit as a bit. No more like mm. asking this guy what he thinks or, you know, no more of the tricks. And would you ab lib? Like, you know, once you have it nailed down, you know what you want to do, what you want to say, yeah, how much freedom do you give yourself? Oh, I there? ad lib a lot. Do you, yeah. Yeah. Like sometimes annoyingly so, especially coincidentally enough, we were chatting with the lads there beforehand about content. But particularly in terms of like when I'm looking to get a clip, sometimes I get annoyed at myself because I'm like, in the moment, this was so funny with everybody, but you're like riding an energy. But yeah. you put that on a, a tiny iPhone, like this just the energy isn't there. I wish I had just stuck to the joke and had my 30 second joke. Now I got like, what are you doing? Fucking chatting. Yeah, you know, like yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a very good live performer, but sometimes like the, the, the manic energy of it is not as good for like when you just need a clip. Yeah. And there, there's, must be a difference between the comedians who are one liners and that's their routine. They're just bang, bang. And then people who tell short stories and then people who tell long stories, like the routine has to be crafted in a different way. And you're in that kind of storytelling uh, phase. So you have to have a beginning, a middle and an end, or do you just have something to start off with and let us see where it goes? I mean, I very quickly figure it out. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like, I'm not ad libbing for too long, you know, like I'm not, I don't commit to things that aren't working for too long. So you figure that out pretty quick. That part's easy. I mean, I have a lot of admiration for the one-liner guys or, you know, or, or even for the, the just more, you know, the, the more technical joke writers. Yeah. Guy like Sam Morales, a, a New Yorker, kind of up and coming, kind of came really. Mm. He's kind of like, he's just about blown up his Netflix special, but his jokes are very precise, mm. you know? Um, and I, I really have a lot of admiration for that because there's just not a lot of filler. But, you know, on the flip side, sometimes you feel like, uh, sometimes you can feel like a lack of connection. Actually, that's not wrong. I'm not saying you feel like a connection with him, but that style, uh, it just, 
it creates a natural distance. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Which is good because I love his jokes. I mean, this is like pure praise for Sam Morell. But obviously, every style has its limitations. Yeah. And the storytelling style, the limitation is, you know, you get so uh, you're so hung up on telling a story that you know sometimes you can it can lack in, in laughs. You know, all those styles they're all valid. Uh, I have never been a great technical joke writer. I actually, I I feel like. It's it's like more mathematical, and I was terrible at math. <laughs> I really was a terrible math student, and I feel like the best joke writers have like more mathematical yeah. brains. Yeah, it's like musicians in some way. You piece it together, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I, but I I but I've always been like a natural performer. Mm. I know how to sell it, and I I've always been a great storyteller. Yeah. I know I'm a gr- I, I am a good naturally good storyteller. So, you know, you, you play to your yeah. strengths. But I have to say, like, if you look at all the jokes that I've written throughout my life, like the, the one-liner vein or the more, the more traditional joke is not, there's not many in my repertoire. Yeah. Every now and then I get lucky with a thought, but it, it, it's, not, it's not how my brain works. Yeah, I, yeah, I've yeah. accepted that. Yeah, yeah, in fact, yeah. I, I, I once thought about doing like a, a show about like going back and trying to do maths again because I was very good at languages in the end but I wasn't good at languages in school yeah so I thought maybe I need to go back now uh and learn maths because I actually thought that perhaps a better understanding of like formulas yeah uh patterns yeah patterns would help me to write jokes a little bit different to the way that I write them yeah but I I didn't do that (laughs) 